Before I get too deep into PyMail and start showing you guys all the nitty gritty and also all the advantages and disadvantages of using PyMail, I just want to show you guys a few little tricks that I've picked up along the way and let's get into it. So the first thing I want to do is import pymail.call as pm. So that's very similar to how we do import my.cmds as cmds, except this is how we import pymail. And as I was uh, showing you guys in the last video, everything else is pretty much the same. All you have to do is put uh, pm dot instead of cmds dot. And that's really the biggest difference. So something that we always do is ls sl is equal to true. And if you remember, this just stores our selection. So if I create a cube and then I run this code, now if I print cell, you can see it will print our selection. But you can see something a little bit different here. It has this nt.transform. So that's one of the first differences with PyMail is that it doesn't return a string. You can see the string here, but it's actually returning this nt.transform object. So if I access it and I print it out, you can see it's just printing the name. So there's something a little bit interesting going on here in that when you print something, when you print a particular object, the object can have its own special method built into the object itself that translates it into a string. So if I do something like print type of cell, you're going to see something interesting here that it's going to show you that it's not actually a string. It's actually a node type of transform. So it's a transform node type, which is exactly what we have selected here. It's just the transform of the cube. So if I show the shapes, you can see this is the actual mesh and this is the transform. So if I delete the mesh, now we're just left with the transform and I can just transform it around like so still. So it's just the group more or less. So that's really the difference is PyMail doesn't deal with things as strings. It deals with things as objects. And I'll get a little bit deeper into what that all means in the explanation video. But for now, I just want to show you guys that it is a little bit different in that it doesn't return strings. But instead of doing pm.ls sl is equal to true, which admittedly I think is very silly, you know, it's it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to people who don't script you know, what the hell does ls sl is equal to true mean? So it's a little bit confusing. But PyMail actually does have something in it which is very similar to ls sl is equal to true and it's just pm.selected. So it does the exact same thing. So if I run this code and now I print cell, you'll see we get the exact same result except I had the mesh selected. So if I select just the transform and print it, you can see we get the transform. So it's, it's doing the exact same thing as pm.ls sl is equal to true, except it's just a lot more readable. So you can see what it actually means. It, we, we're just getting the selected, our selection. So this is the first cool thing I think about PyMail is you can just do pm.selected. And a few other cool things is uh, in CMDS, we have a way to connect objects together so we can do connections. So if I have two objects here, I can first store the selection and then I can do PM dot uh, connect adder. And what this will do is connect one attribute to another. So I can say connect the first selected attribute and in uh, CMDS, we have to do some string formatting like this. So it's a little bit uh, messy, you would say. And then I would put the attribute, so maybe translate X. And then I'll do the same thing again. And I just need to make sure I connect the first object to the second object. Then I can do the same thing again. So where we're connecting to, and then we're connecting to the second object. So if I run this, uh, I'm getting invalid syntax. What did I miss? must have missed something. So I missed one additional bracket. Now it should work. So you see now we've connected um, this second object to the first object. So the translates to match. So I can actually hide or maybe I can move this cube up. But now you can see the translate X is connected 
in both these cubes. So this is very long, as you can see, it's a very long line and it's, it's quite messy to be honest. And Pymel actually has a very elegant way to do this. What we can actually do is say our first selection translate X and we can use two greater than symbols and then we can do cell one dot translate X. So that does the exact same thing. So if I just come back to the second cube and I break this connection, break connections like that. And then I just select both these cubes again. I'll delete this line and then I'll run this. And you can see it's done the connection exactly the same. So this is just a very clean way to connect two attributes together. And I think this is far, far more readable than whatever the hell was going on up here. You can see how much longer and the fact that we have to do all this strange string formatting if we were to do this in CMDS. But PyMail is also pretty cool in that we don't actually need to do the string formatting. We can still use this connect adder attribute, except we can just specify this translate X and then do dot translate X there. And this will do the exact same thing and it will still work. So I can break connection like so. And then I can run this and it should work. Yeah, you can see our connection is created again. So this still works, even though it's a little bit longer than the other method, I much prefer just not having to run that command at all. And instead just doing this, as you can see it, we're just saying, Hey, let's connect this to this one. So this one would drive this attribute much more easier to read. So yeah, those are just two very cool and simple things that you can do with PyMail. Of course, you can do so many more things, but I just wanted to kind of wet the palette a little bit and show you guys a few little cool tricks and, um, and tips. In fact, there's one more, which I want to definitely, um, kind of throw in here is if I name this object, John, and I wanted to create, uh, an object that wraps this, a PyMail object because these are all PyMail objects. So if I run this and you know, we show what's stored in cell, you can see it's returning this object, but how do we actually generate these PyMail objects? Well, what I can actually do is I can say, John, just create a variable called John. It doesn't really need to be called John. It can be called anything, but I'm just going to name this John. So it's, yeah, it just kind of resembles what I'm actually going to store there. You can actually do PM.py node and specify a string called John. And I don't need to have anything selected. And what this will do is Maya will try to locate something called John, an object called John. And there's only one object called John. So to automatically locate that and it'll store, it'll take the string of that and it'll convert it into an object. So it basically wraps this object named John into a pi node. So now when I look at John, you can see it's this NT dot transform object. And this is very important moving forward. It's sometimes you'll have to deal with strings. So if you this decide to do a little bit of coding and you want to start to wrap some string objects that you had in CMDS back into PyMail objects, you'll need to use this little trick here, PM.py node and passing the string there and that'll wrap the object and generate a PyMail object. So that's just a handy little trick. And now I can do something like if I just break this connection quickly, now I can do something like uh, cell zero dot translate X and let's connect John to there. So we can just pass the name here, John dot translate X. And then I can select the cube. So this is my selection here. I want to just quickly store my selection. So now I have my selection stored. I don't need all this. Now I have my selection stored. I can query the translate X attribute and connect the translate X of John to the translate X of my selection. And if you remember, we already stored John in memory, so I don't actually need to remove that, but yeah, I can just run all this code and you can see it'll connect John's translate X to the P cube. So this is just a handy way to convert a string 
a name of an object into a Pymo object so you can use these cool little features that uh, you have access to inside of Pymel. Yeah. Yeah, so I plan to show a lot more of this Pymel sort of stuff as we move forward. I'm probably going to switch entirely to using Pymel um, unless there's, you know, some reason not to use Pymel. And uh, I'll go through uh, all those reasons why. But for now, moving forward, I'm going to start using Pymel. So, you know, make sure you you guys take a, a closer look at Pymel. And, uh, and I honestly think it's pretty awesome. So, yeah. Until next time. Stick around.